we're going to experiment. So this goes to Professor Andre Gabal. Um, respect to him. He's a great world champion in jiu-jitsu. Remembering the basics of the mount escape, we got to think about a couple fundamental things that the top person will do. One is if they're over your hips, they're usually vulnerable to a bridge which knocks them off balance. So oftentimes once they get to know what they're doing, unless they're actually sprawling or trying to stretch you out and attack the neck, they tend to ride up high underneath the arms. Okay, so this is a high mount position. If this happens and it splays my elbow, it's extremely important that I get my elbow back to the inside. So that's a really fundamental thing. Your, your frames need to be on the inside of your opponent's body at all times. And that's kind of a true, that's actually, unless you're doing, you know, like a back take um, by pulling them past you, it's kind of the rule of thumb regardless. You want the inside. If we're pummeling, we want the inside, not the outside. So we want to get this elbow in to the inside. Um, if indeed this person comes all the way down, starts to hook, and really trying to put, you know, hip pressure on me and attacking my neck, um, I've, I've got to make sure that I keep one arm in all the time. And this one framing here, okay? This is going to be the setup for our escape with this. And it should not matter too much if this person is trying to put pressure as long as we have one arm in. Now from here, this is where we're going to experiment. So this goes to Professor Andre Gabo. Um, respect to him. He's a great world champion in jiu-jitsu. And, um, and I'm kind of experimenting with this, but I really liked, as I was thinking about no-gi mount escape that gets you to a, an offensive, this came up on my radar, and that's why I really want to play with it. So bear with me here. Be patient. So from here, this person's hips are being blocked by my hand. Uh, oftentimes, you know, in an elbow knee escape, what we're trying to do is get on our side, plant a foot, scrape this down, right? Keep that knee heavy until we can actually hook that leg. And that's good too. That's another escape. But it doesn't really set us up for a leg attack or an out the back escape. So from here, his hands are posted. What I'm gonna try to really do here is I'm gonna try to push him up with my legs, but from this setup right here, I need to use my legs to bump him up and then shoot him up high so I can get this leg out here. Come around, and now I have a heel hook. If he continues to go belly down, yeah, he could do the crocodile, but let's say he just goes belly down. We have a calf slicer here. So there's a couple of little nice alternatives and we're gonna keep it pretty simple today. But this is what I wanna start with. So very little resistance from this guy while we get this technique down. All I really wanna do, make sure these are underneath my leg. All I really wanna do is get to a point where I'm able to shove him with my legs and get him popped up. Normally they're gonna both kinda of like post on their hands. And then they're really tripoded, which gives us a big hand. I think he's being nice because I'm talking. Come around, just catch it and release. Give it a try. One, two, three. 